Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. These over here are Intel GPUs. In fact, all of them that are released up to this point in time. What I have here is the A580, A750, A770, and B580. But here's the question. Everyone is looking for Intel to kind of be the savior of the GPU race because Nvidia is just a whole other planet. AMD is catching up, but Intel, please be the affordable option. In fact, all of these are a lot more affordable than any of the red and green competition. I've tested them all. And in this video, I'm going to show you what's the actual difference and which one should you go for. Ah, it's so annoying. I don't want to pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the code TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here or the one you're watching. Click yeah. in the link on the video description, add the Windows 11 CD product to the cart, proceed to checkout, add the code TN20 for the extra discount. So what the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22. <laughs> yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Oh, well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, um, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide. So go check out uh, other products, maybe like Microsoft Office. Now, this time I'm not going to be going into the specs of all of these because you can look at individual reviews of these on my channel. I want to really focus on the performance, but in order to still showcase some of the performance difference, it's important to mention the test and setup. So I'm running the Intel i9-12900K with Asus Strix Z690 DDR4, 64 gigabytes of Kingston Fury Beast running at 3600 MHz, Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 mm AIO, and for the SSD I'm using Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte. And to power this, we've got the Be Quiet Pure Power 1200 watt power supply. So in case you don't understand the Intel naming scheme of Intel GPUs, here's the genesis. The first generation is A, the second generation is B, then the third one, hopefully in the future is going to be C and so on. Within the generation, they kind of have like the i5, i7, i9, i3, setups if that makes sense by the way if you want to check out any of these i'm going to leave the link in the description below so you can easily pick one of these up hey if you haven't subscribed yet consider subscribing more videos like these are coming out all the time focusing on creators not gaming so if you want a bit of a different take on some of the gaming hardware you're welcome here back to the video so looking at geekbench 6 gpu at first the a750 is slightly faster than the a580 about 10 percent roughly average on opencl and vulcan a770 there's a bigger jump in there there's 20 and 27 percent so as you can see the a750 is a little bit closer than the a770 and then now the b580 interestingly in terms of vulcan scores has got the, the highest score but then opencl slot somewhere between this here, the A750 and A580, which is interesting. Looking at the AI scores, A750 is very, very similar to the A580, almost three times the score, which is impressive. So the new generation of GPUs really makes a difference. But let's take a look at some real world applications for photo editing, Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. But looking at the Photoshop, honestly, the difference is within margin of error. I would say that the B580 is getting slightly out of the margin of error, 2.8% faster compared to the A580. But at the same time, if you're looking at the price difference and generational difference, there really isn't any difference for Photoshop. And I would recommend any one of these for Photoshop. There are some other benefits that you might want to consider that I'll talk about later on in this video. In Lightroom Classic, we're seeing, again, interesting things. The newest card now is 3.6% slower, and in fact is the slowest card. The A770 is, again, slower, and the fastest card is the A750, which to me just shows that I think for Adobe Lightroom Classic, again, it doesn't really matter which GPU you're gonna go for, you're gonna get roughly the same performance. But things are about to change with video editing. Moving on to 
Adobe Premiere Pro. And here the A750 is about 5 to 5.5% 5 .5 roughly faster in the extended and standard overall scores. The GPU effects are 15% faster than the A580, which is actually huge. Interestingly, there's no VRAM difference between the A580 and A750. The A770 is 13 to 17 percent faster than the a580 and the gpu effects are 65 percent faster in the standard and then about 50 percent faster in the extended scores that is a huge difference in terms of the other codecs you can see roughly about five percent faster there in the raw scores or two percent in the long GOP, so not that much of a difference but probably because of the vram double the amount of vram 16 gigabytes that makes a difference for the a770 and we're looking at the b580 the b580 didn't even complete the test in the extended overall scores only the standard one did complete the standard one looks quite impressive we're closer to the a770 there but still slightly slower in pretty much everything than the a770 not a bad performance from the b580 considering that it matches pretty much the performance of the top end of the previous generation moving into after effects and here we're getting a little bit of a mixed bag whereas now the a750 doesn't want to complete the test with extended overall scores but it is roughly about two percent faster in the standard scores the 3d standard seems to be wildly better for a750 compared to the a580 the a770 is about the same in standard st scores but in extended scores about 14% faster. The B580 again about 2% overall scores are faster than the A580 so not that big of a difference but looks like the A770 is the one that stands out here again perhaps the 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve and here I've got a little bit of a disappointing result. As you can see there's a lot of crashes. In fact a lot of them. As much as I try the B580 just does not want to complete a test the A580 only completes it in the basic scores, which is the Winter Resolve non-studio version. So that's the standard version. It doesn't really show us how the GPU performs. Interestingly, A750 is slower in the basic scores, but then does complete the standard overall scores. And I think is all right. The A770 seems to be obviously the fastest in here, probably because the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which DaVinci Resolve loves to take all advantage of. Moving on to 3D, here's the thing. The Intel GPUs aren't so supported in a lot of the 3D applications that you would need as a 3D creator. So if you're looking at Octane Bench, Redshift, V-Ray, you're really just out of luck because they're not supported. The one thing that Intel does have support is Blender. So looking at the difference here, A750 is roughly between 3 to 10% faster than the 5 a580 not that big of a difference the a770 is about 5.6 percent faster in the monster scene compared to the a580 which is not bad the junction scene obviously is wildly different on a whole other level but i'm not sure why the lower end cards didn't just get the scores there because we're getting about 10 to 15 times lower scores which is insane the classroom scene is about 14 percent faster and when moving to the latest generation the b580 is not actually faster in 3d than the a770 so the a770 seems to be the best in 3d which is a bit of a surprise now i really hope that intel's gonna work on the support on more of the 3d applications but the industry is kind of set already with the cuda that nvidia offers so now the a580 and the B580 are roughly pulling about the same power. And then the A750 and then A770 are also roughly pulling about the same power. Only a couple of watts, like five watts difference, what I'm seeing the A770 and then the A750. Now, all of these cards are fairly low end in terms of power draw, but at the same time, if you compare them to Nvidia and AMD's offerings at the same Paul Park or price range, then these are pulling a little bit more power than the competition. Intel's not in the power game right now for the GPUs, they're just trying to build the architecture so it will be easier to scale in the future. So what's the conclusion? Which one should you be getting? I think there's one card that actually stands out from here. And the one that stands out is the A770. Because of its 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it just puts it in a whole other class. The 12 gigabytes is nice on the B580, so we did get an extra four gigabyte bump from the A580, but I still think the 16 gigabytes puts it in a whole other level. 
And that's why it's performing better in most of the applications. As a content creator, I think if you're doing video editing, the A770 is an interesting one because the 16 gigabytes of VRAM allows you to do certain things that perhaps even Nvidia and AMD don't allow you to do for the same price point just because you've got more VRAM. And it's got the same GPU acceleration on all of the GPUs here. So if you're on an AMD platform that doesn't support 422 10-bit H.265 playback, for example, then if having this GPU or any of these GPUs here, in fact, you will get the support. So that puts this in a very interesting mix. If you want to pair a Threadripper or an AMD 9950X Ryzen platform, for example, then having any of these GPUs suddenly makes your video editing insanely better than NVIDIA 4000 series or any of the Radiant offerings from AMD just because of the better codec support on the timeline. So perhaps picking up the A770 is a good idea. Now, I can't wait for Intel to actually come up with a newer version of the A770 and the A750 and I would love there to also be a 9 series of these GPUs that perhaps can compete with the mid-range of NVIDIA 5070, for example, or AMD's 9070 XD lineup. That would be absolutely amazing. But what is more interesting is Intel's actually launched an AI model where they have a lot more VRAM on some of these GPUs which might be a very interesting buy for some of these people who want to run local LMs because you can load everything on the GPU VRAM. If you want to pick any of these up, the link's in the description below. If you want to reach out, reach out on Minect because I'll always get back to my Minect messages within 24 hours. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.